What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. How's it going, everyone, and welcome to episode 61 of the Lost Media Podcast, Batgirl 2022. I was so excited for this movie. It was going to be the greatest superhero movie ever made, and I was just so keen for it. I was hanging out outside my cinema the entire time, the entire months of its production and post-production. I was just waiting for it to appear in cinemas. It's never going to be released. I'm joking, by the way. I I never heard of this until after it was announced that it was cancelled and... uh, Lost media, it became. Uh, where I hate saying the line, where do you even start with this? Because I feel like it's a cliche with a lot of pieces of lost media that are just icebergs. But I think this is a mini little iceberg. I think it's more like an ice cube. I've, I've made that joke so many times on this stupid podcast. I feel like it's more like an iced tea. Guys, iced tea, the, the dude from um, Law and Order, <laughs> he's a good actor. Uh, Let me just say that this is disappointing. This movie would have sucked, in my opinion. But whenever something is unreleased as opposed to being released, it's a disappointment. People put hours into it. They put time into it, which are one and the same thing, essentially. Uh, Maybe I should stop listing off things on my hands because I I genuinely just say the same shit. People put They put so much effort into this stuff. And, you know, it never gets released. And it's ridiculous. And this is one of the most notable pieces of recent lost media that has had a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of hours put into it. And it just never came to be, never came to fruition. Um, This movie was starring Michael Keaton uh, reprising his role as Batman and making an appearance, obviously. Um, Not being in the movie for very long, I don't think. Oh, he was in the movie potentially for a while. I'm not really sure though. You you guys might have to correct me on that. Brendan Fraser was in this. Uh, Sylvester Stallone was originally going to be the villain, but Brendan Fraser took over. And the girl who played Batgirl, I can't remember off the top of my head because I don't have notes for these podcasts. I'm trying to do them all off by heart, um, which is awkward. Uh, But (laughs) Batgirl has had a long history. Um, It's not just something that was materialized for Batman and Robin in 1997 or recently for this as part of the, oh, guys, we need a girl character as the lead role of everything. No. Um, People probably thought when this was announced, oh, here we go again, another girl character with the lead role. They're just trying to push this female hero thing. And then you realize that Batgirl has been around since like the third season of the original Adam West Batman and Robin TV show. And it's like, ew. Ah, right. This is just part of the uh, Batman law, I guess you call it. Oh, now I feel, I feel sheepish. (laughs) I think people kind of just, um, I think I didn't hear much about people jumping on the train of, oh, this is so stupid. They have to have a bat girl movie. Um, but yeah, it's pretty common knowledge. And I don't even know much about the DC superhero universe, but it's pretty common knowledge that Batman had Batgirl from the very beginning, there was a Batgirl character. And although it hasn't appeared in many Batman iterations, um, I think this was necessary in a weird way. I mean, they've pumped out enough movies, enough Batman movies. Why not release Batgirl? And I think Batgirl's been hard done by, if I'm being honest. Three appearances ever, one in the TV show, one in 1997's Batman and Robin, one of the shittest Batman pieces of media ever released. And then the next appearance becomes cancelled by Warner Brothers. Now, how this got cancelled, I just want to run through before I forget it. I was going to run through that later in the podcast, but let's just run through it now. I think it was a tax write-off. You guys might need to correct me on that. I think it was a tax avoidance uh, thing. And they were kind of swapping over with different companies. Uh, Warner Discovery, it was merged to become uh, as this movie was wrapping up post-production. And the person who took over saw this and thought, Uh, This is in post-production. It's cost them $90 million to make. Uh, It was going to be uploaded on HBO Max. We don't want any superhero movies uploaded on HBO Max anymore. I'm not only cancelling this as a film, but I'm also... It's not going to... It wasn't going to be released in cinemas, guys. It was a streaming services only thing. I'm not only cancelling this. um, I'm also 
going to hide all copies and claim that we deleted the copies. Strange. Very, very strange. Um, the directors of this film, one of the two directors was at his wedding. I think they were both at one of the director's wedding <laughs> when it was announced to them that this movie was cancelled. Uh, imagine that, being at your wedding and they're just like, someone calls you and it's like, oh, hey, by the way, you know that movie you've just wrapped up post-production for and you're, or you're almost finished wrapping up post-production? Oh, uh, yeah, that's um, that's cancelled now. We're not, we're not releasing that. It's also a tax write-off. Uh, a tax avoidance method for Warner uh, Discovery Group and this new guy who's running it uh, and it's going to help them save a lot of money, uh, especially the lot of money that they spent on your movie. Uh, so, fuck you, uh, your movie's cancelled and eat shit and die. That's what they, that's verbatim what they said to these guys over the, no, it's not. But, <laughs> it's a sad, it, I get really disappointed in pieces of media that were canned like this. Uh, the general plot, I think, of the villain was, as opposed to uh, in The Batman, um, the Riddler unleashing, uh, flooding the city, unleashing water through the city, flooding the whole city of Gotham. I think he was going to set the whole city on fire, the villain. Um, and just like, I, I don't know. I guess the whole city's on fire. I guess, what, what more? what more is there to that? It's all on fire. Gotham is literally on fire. So that whole uh, saying from all the other Batman movies is like, this guy's going to set Gotham on fire. It literally happened. Um, but the problem with this movie, I will admit, is $90 million is actually a very meek and crap budget for a superhero movie these days. Um, so I'm willing to guess this wasn't great. They did a lot of test screenings. I think they did one or two or three test screenings. Um and from the first one, it got a 60% rating score from the people that were sitting there. Now, a lot of recent superhero movies like Shazam 2, don't even get me started on that. Um, all the superhero movies, they, they get a 60% rating score. Now, I should, I should point out, guys, I'm not the biggest fan of superhero movies. I mean, I don't mind them. I think they're not bad um, when they're done well, but they're very rarely done well. And I'm willing to guess that this was just eh. Like, I'm willing to guess it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. But they were trying to patch up all the parts that they thought the audience dozed off or thought that the audience, you know, wasn't that interested in uh, when the movie dragged on. And they were really trying to put in an effort here. You know, you got Michael Keaton reprising his role as Batman. You got Brendan Fraser. He's in the middle of his comeback to Hollywood uh, and his movie. Of course, in classic Brendan Fraser fashion, a movie he's in gets cancelled. It's okay. He won an Oscar anyway for The Whale, so it doesn't matter. Um, it's fine. It's fine. Who cares? Um, but still disappointing for a guy who's used to disappointments though, with his, with his acting career, it's, it's not the end of the world, but, uh, for the fans of Brendan Fraser who are interested in his comeback story, it's very disappointing. It's incredibly disappointing. I don't like it. Um, but I think the, di the directors, a fun fact about them, they tried to log into the um, database where the movie files were all kept and they changed the password. <laughs> the people in charge, they're just dickheads. It's presumably to stop the film from getting leaked, obviously. Um, but <sighs> I think this will be leaked one day, actually. I have a theory. It is in Warner's vaults at the moment. Um, it is, it hasn't been deleted by Warner Brothers. There's a lot of claims that it has been deleted. I'm almost sure it hasn't. It's in their vaults. Um, they did do a screening for all the actors and for the directors <laughs> and for anyone involved in the movie before they shelved it for good. Uh, and they just showed it what they worked on one more time. I can imagine that was more like a morgue that had a uh, screening than a celebration of the movie now that it, you know, got cancelled and it's no longer released. But you can just tell like it's probably, got, it's got to be the most disappointing thing ever for a movie such as this at this caliber the actors just being uh, told, hey guys, your movie, it's never never going to be released. They would never have expected that in a million years for something with Batgirl as the title, something so prestigious. You'd never pick that it would be cancelled. And it happened. It's 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 shattering. It's very shattering. Um, maybe it's for the best because the budget wasn't that great and the movie was just going to be eh. But here at the Lost Media Podcast, we don't like lost media. It doesn't matter if your lost media is garbage, is hot garbage. It's the one of the worst things ever created and it's really, really bad. We still don't like lost media. 
when I say we, I say me. Um, <laughs> we here at the Lost Media Podcast is just me. Um, you know, we don't want your... <laughs> we don't want these movies to be shelved forever. We want to freaking see them. We want to see... We don't like things becoming lost to time. It's really sad and it's disappointing for the people to put their hard work and hours into it for something to just be never seen again and shelved forever um, in the archives. So Batgirl needs to be released one day. It must. It has to. In any capacity. It doesn't care. Who cares if it's leaked online? It doesn't matter if it's played in cinemas. It probably won't be. Um, it, it must be released someday. It really should be. Uh, you could liken this to Hey Arnold, the Jungle Movie, but I think the original version of that only had a couple of scenes animated and voiced. Uh, and then they actually made the full movie, I think, from the beginning again. I would like to talk about that on the Lost Media Podcast because I'm very interested in the discrepancy between those scenes that were made in the early 2000s and the full movie and if there's anything from the original that was put in the full movie in 2017, but I doubt it. I, I, I highly doubt it. Um, but Batgirl, to stay on topic, my God. Um, Warner Brothers, Warner Discovery, just really... This just really happens every time a company merges or every time two companies swap over. I've talked about this previously in the Lost Media podcast and other episodes. Companies swapping over or merging and a new person taking the reins. I think it was Dumbo 2 was the last example of this I talked about. And a movie just gets canned. It doesn't matter what part of production it's in into, it gets canned. And the only reason was because they didn't want to release movies on HBO Max anymore. Who cares? And they wanted the big cinematic, brilliant releases uh, in the cinemas that are going to be that big, you know, showtime productions. And this was obviously just a little, little project for the internet, essentially. $90 million budget for a bat, for the movie Batgirl as the title, $90 million, bit weak. So I could see... I could see how they were just like, oh, it's just not good enough for what we want this to be. Let's stop it. But really disappointing, really sad piece of lost media. Uh, that's all there really is to it, guys. If you want to add more details in the comments, uh, there is more to it, uh, I'm sure. Uh, but from the research I've done, that was literally all I was able to gather from this. Um, yeah, really, really sad, especially considering how close it was to being finished. But oh, well. Oh, well, the end. Um, we hope Michael Keaton will, uh, don the, uh, don the bat suit one more time in another Batman movie, but we'll see. Um, thanks guys for watching. Another episode is coming out very soon. That was episode 61 of the Lost Media Podcast. I'm trying to release so many episodes, oh, six episodes per week, but I'm trying to record a lot of them coming up, uh, so that when I go away, as I've mentioned this in many previous podcasts, just to drilling the point home. Uh, I have episodes uh, that I'm releasing. The general schedule is today. Uh, Wednesday is two and Friday is two. Uh, and then the week after, it's one per day on the weekdays uh, from Tuesday, not starting from Monday. I know that's a bit weird, but Tuesday to Friday and then the next week, Monday to Thursday, uh, one episode per day. So weird schedule we got going on here. Don't ask me how I come up with it. It's very strange. Um, it just works for me with uh, what I'm, how I'm trying to work it around other projects I've got going on and all sorts of things I'm doing. Um, but I appreciate your viewership. I appreciate all of you in the comments. Ed, the support's been amazing. Uh, it's incredible to start a podcast in April, early April, virtually. Not even early April. I was near, it's, It was nearly mid-April. Um, and to have nearly 500 subscribers <laughs> after such a short amount of time is mental. Um, but I am trying to make more commentaries. Uh, I think for the next few months, though, when I'm making commentaries, they'll be less than six minutes long. They won't be very long. And they'll never be very long on this channel. It's a predominantly a podcast channel. But the commentaries I am trying to introduce so I could bring this show to a wider audience. I think people gravitate more towards commentaries that are several pieces of lost media featured and the title being something that people want to gravitate more towards. I need to end this. Thank you, guys. The end. Um, what did I say last episode? I think I said something to do with um, a really bad joke. Let's not repeat bad jokes. They're bad. They're very, they're bad for a reason. Goodbye, guys. The end.